Yo guys, welcome back to the channel and today I will be making a tutorial on how to drift in Need for Speed Most Wanted with controller and steering wheel. Now you are probably wondering why not to show us how to drift with keyboard as well. Well, the sad truth is that you can't really drift properly with a keyboard in this game. Yeah, you can get a power slide or a short drift, but that's not the proper drifting. So I really recommend drifting with controller or a steering wheel. So first of all, we need a proper car to be able to drift. I recently posted a video where I drifted all 33 cars in the first beat most wanted, and in my opinion, without a doubt, the best car for drifting were Lexus IS300 and Mazda RX-7. So the best thing if you are just starting off would be to grab one of these two. For this tutorial I will be using Mazda RX-7. Ok, so now we have the car. Now we need to upgrade some parts. So let's head up to a nearest tuning shop. First for the parts upgrade you want to buy a new body kit or a spoiler. You can choose both but you must pick at least one because what this does it unlocks an aerodynamics tuning option which will tune later. The other three options, rims, hoods and roof scoops are your personal preferences and they won't affect the drifting in any way but make sure to make your car look as cool as possible because no one likes to watch ugly cars. Now let's jump to a performance upgrades. For the engine you want to use the ultimate upgrade, the same goes for a transmission. For the suspension, you always want to choose the first option, so it unlocks your steering, handling and ride height performance tuning possibilities, but it doesn't give you too much grip. The nitrous I always upgrade all the way up. Now for the tires. You again want to choose the first option, which in my case is Super Pro, because if you go with Ultimate, you won't be able to slide your car. Now we are left with brakes and turbo, which we both upgrade to the max. Oh, and don't forget for the visual upgrades as well which will make our car look like a proper drift car. So now, when we upgraded our car, let's jump into the performance steering window. The first thing we can change is steering, which changes how quick the steering response is. Moving the starter to the right will make the steering more responsive. This really depends on our playstyle and on which input device you're playing with, but I always like my steering to be a little more responsive, because you can have quicker transitions when drifting. So I keep this from plus 3 to all the way to plus 5. For this car I will choose plus 5. The next thing is handling and it's fairly simple. If you would like your car to slide a little more, move the slider to the left. So we move the slider all the way to the minus 5. Tuning brakes will affect your car stability while braking. Drift cars usually have a little bit of front bias braking force, so I keep this at plus 2. Right height is pretty self-explanatory. If you move the slider to the right, it will raise the suspension and lower it if you move it to the left. The difference between 0 and minus 5 is almost not noticeable while drifting, so go with whatever option you like, just don't raise the suspension. Now for the downforce. If you open up the help menu, you will see that, if you like your car looser and more likely to slide, try decreasing the downforce. So again, we go with minus 5. Nitrous. This is personal preference. Moving it to the left shortens the duration but will be stronger, and vice versa. I usually keep it at 0. Now here comes the tricky one, turbo tuning. This one is really up to the car you're using, but never go into the positive values. Going in the positive direction will shift your torque boost into higher RPM range, and you would think that it's ok for drifting, because we're constantly driving near the red line, but in fact these cars in this game have enough high end torque, so there is no need to raise it. So I usually set this to minus 5, and then test it out. If I feel the car doesn't have enough high-end torque, I'll go back and change it to minus 4, and so forth. Ok, so we finished performance tuning, now we have just one more thing to do before we send it. Well, there will definitely be a debate whether or not you should use manual or automatic transmission, but from what I found automatic transmission will be our best goal. For manual trains you won't really benefit much, because it's not manual with clutch, but just manual. While drift cars with manual transmission is ok of course to select the most suitable gear for the drift, but the most important thing is the clutch, which helps with the weight transfer of the car. But because we don't get to use the clutch within this game, it's totally ok to go with automatic transmission. For the drift spot I like to use this port area, because you don't have to worry about cops, and you have many different corners you can drift through and it's perfect for beginners. So one important thing to remember that will help you with drifting is that in this game it's hard to spin out while drifting. And when I mean hard, I mean really hard. So if you see that you're losing an angle, quickly smash the gas, without the fear of spinning out. 
and this also means that you don't need to be perfect with your counter steering action, because game won't let you oversteer to the point you are about to spin out. So to start a drift, press the handbrake and turn into the corner. This happens almost simultaneously, then release the handbrake and press the gas at the same time start counter steering. Start with just a small counter steer correction and observe the angle of the car. If you see that you have too much angle, counter steer more and apply less throttle. If you start losing angle, as I said, apply more gas and counter steer a bit less for a quick second. This is just some basic knowledge which will help you learn drifting. The rest is on you. Remember, practice makes perfect. The tips I mentioned previously for drifting with the controller also apply to drifting with the steering wheel, except you don't really need to turn your wheel to counter steer, but the wheel will try to align the car by itself, so you just need to catch it and then apply some corrections to it. In fact, the only difference when drifting with a steering wheel is that you have more control over your throttle and steering, which means more stable and longer drifts. So, to quickly summarize, drifting in for speed most wanted is really easy if you have the car set up for the job. This means having the rear wheel drive car with the right performance upgrades and even more importantly, the right performance steering. After you have all that, just turn into a corner, pull a handbrake, start counter steering or sideways and control the throttle. If you follow through this video, you are definitely ready to send it. I hope this video helped you with your drifting journey. That will be all for today, make sure to drop a like button and subscribe if you haven't yet because I post every week so I won't miss on future content. As always, have a great day and I will see you next time.